Oh, hey everyone. So uh, we have this awesome idea of recording some short video. And uh, today, uh, Wendy uh, joins us to tell a bit about your, uh, her project. And the idea here is Wendy has an awesome project. And uh, the idea is that uh, we want to motivate people to do really cool stuff. And I get this question a lot. Um, I want to learn data science, I want to do a project, but I have no idea what, where to start. And that's why um, I asked Wendy to uh, show the, the cool stuff that she's doing. So that's the, that's the idea. And uh, maybe Wendy, before we go to your project, maybe you can tell us a few words about yourself. Um, so I'm Wendy. I am a data. I work as a data scientist for um, esports company in London. And in my spare time, I like tinkering with just general um, data science, creative coding stuff. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. So tell us uh, about your project. Um, so basically, my project is a bird song classifier um, app. Um, that kind of I'm hoping to eventually um, put on a Raspberry Pi and put in my garden. Um, so the background for this project is that um, I kind of bought a house with a garden last year and kind of it was because like there's a lot of woods nearby so I keep on hearing these like bird calls and I never quite figure out like what they are and because I saw um, a project on the internet about people using Raspberry Pi to take pictures of um, birds that um, came to their bird feeder. So kind of, I thought that would be a cool idea. And if I can, and because I also want to play around with like audio classification. So I thought that would be quite an interesting idea um, to do. So I started off, um, so on Kaggle, there's a few different competitions um, that are like bird song recognition, uh, wildlife no sounds recognition, but I find that um, they are, most of them are based on recordings from the US and like Americas. And because it obviously like in Europe, there I expect there to be different bird species and the calls might also be different even for common species. So what I did was um, there's a data set from, um, I think, uh, I don't remember the name, but there's a data set on Kaggle that has a list of common bird species um, in the UK. So I just went to Seno Canto and um, kind of downloaded all the recordings for those species that are recorded in um, Europe. Um, so I expanded to Europe a bit because um, there isn't that many recordings for, um, for just the UK uh, for the less common birds. So I think I got there's around 80 species um, or so that I was testing it on. Um, so kind of, uh, and um, I also filtered the data set for um, just a higher um, quality recording. So there's like on Sano Canto, which is a very big website for um bird recordings there's like different data qualities and um it i i just chose the easier um high quality recordings because i thought well it's i just want to get something to work first before worrying about uh, like for example handling environmental noise and all that kind of thing um yeah so um so kind of so after i did all the data sets i kind of have an inspection and there are already some issues that I thought of is that some recordings are really long, like um, eight, 10 minutes, and some are really short, like um, 10, 15 seconds. So that's one thing that I might need to handle. And then the other thing is that for, especially for the longer recordings, there's also um, a potential for a mix of different birds. Um, like for example, if it's a chorus, then you're likely to have multiple species. And um, the third is that it just like 80 classes. So it's hard to know in advance how well the classifier will work or not. Um, so what I did was, um, so in audio classification, there's um, one very common way that people do it is for spectrograms, but there's also um, newer uh, models that run on um, just waveforms. And one of them is, uh, 
a model that you can get on TensorFlow Hub. Uh, it's called YAMNet, and basically it kind of is also detects when sound effect events happen. So it so it basically um try to detect what's the event at each timestamp sort of thing. And um, I thought that would be kind of quite useful as a starting baseline so, uh, or fine tuning. So I basically uh, just try to run my um, waveforms um, through YAMNAT and, and then use a linear layer on top of it to kind of do the final like classification. It was, um, and I used the uh, five, uh, top five accuracy as a uh, metric. Uh, so the initial results um, was kind of a bit, um, well, it's not very good. It's about 40% um, over 80 classes. Although, I mean, I tested it first on like the two most common species and then it was quite good, but two species is quite <laughs> easy and um, you kind of, get a lot more than that in real life. Um, and then, so I thought of like, can I use YAMNet to just clean my data? So, um, because there are like three original classes in, so YAMNet is trained on a very big set of uh, videos, I think from YouTube. Um, they have um, a lot of different classes for different events, like singing, talking, whatever, but there's actually, um, there are three classes that correspond to bird song. Um, so I basically thought, well, can I, um, for each recording, can I just um, filter out for events that are classified as these three bird song related classes? And, um, and what I did was kind of, if it's up anything, a, a score of above 0.2, which is arbitrary, like probability that is a bird call over 0.2, then I just kind of keep that section. Um, and then I pass it through a high pass filter to remove like a um, bit more environmental noise. And then I save the recording. Um, and then kind of, I also thought that um, because the recordings are so different in days, it might be make it easier if I uh, keep them to regular lengths. And also if I do that, it'll for if I want to try a spectrogram, then um, that also makes it a lot easier. So I basically uh, tried um, fine tuning first, kind of uh, chop it, like clean it, and then chop it up into, I think, uh, 20 second chunks. And then I do another pass through YAMNet, uh, just the same fine tuning process. And I kind of gave get another like 8% increase in top five accuracy, which is nice, but it's still like less than 50%. Um, yeah, and then kind of, I also tried like training on spectrogram. And again, it's like, it did really well on just two classes, but um, falls over when I try to add more. Um, but kind of like, um, but I thought, well, it's not great, but I'll just put it in an app and then I can play around with it. And then as the model improve, I can keep tweaking it. So I basically like put together a very quick app on Streamlit and Streamlit is quite nice because it now it got like, um, for free, you can share five apps publicly. And um, so I just put it onto Streamlit where, where kind of like you can just put in recording and then it um, tells you what the top five uh, most likely birds are. Um, it's wrong quite a lot of the time, um, but it's quite fun. Um, and uh, yeah, kind of I think uh, for the deployment initially, I actually tried putting um, the model on Algorithmia um, because you can kind of have a, uh, Algorithmia is basically a model serving service. And I just, I thought it would be quite useful to learn how to use something external like that for like larger models. but um, I can't seem to call it properly from Streamlit. So as it turns out, my model was only about two megabytes anyway. Mm -hmm. So I just put it on GitHub and like deploy on Streamlit. Um, yeah, so that's about it. That's cool. So now can you uh, yourself recognize different uh, bird species by listening uh, to their songs? Um, not really. I, I kind of start recognizing a few more, but 
um, not very confidently. Um, I mean, I never really paid that much attention to like different spirits before I started the project. Because there is one annoying bird that may, wakes me up every uh, every morning, so I'm really wondering. I I like how it's sign uh, like the 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 voice of the bird, but it's annoying because it's too early. So I'm wondering what this bird is. <laughs> <laughs> Should maybe record and test it. Um, can you show us this uh, streamlit that you deployed? The streamlit hub. Uh, yeah, so basically, um, it's very simple interface. Um, you just kind of, um, you can just drag and uh, drop stuff. Um, so I have got an, I, a Blackboard recording that I know works. Um, so basically, I just drop. It here, I can play this as well. Um, so it's a common black dirt. That's the most uh, uh, likely class, right? Yeah, so kind of, so this is just a very simple interface. And I have some ideas around like adding um, like feedback. So kind of like if people disagree with um, the classification results, they can kind of um, send me back to results, but I haven't figured out how to do that properly yet. So yeah, so that's the current state of the project. Um, there's still a lot of improvements I'd like to do on it, but because it's a side project, I just, I, Kind of, I work on it from time to time, and it's been um, kind of a bit part to the last month or so. So once it's ready, once you put this on Raspberry, please uh, send us a video. Uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I think that would be uh, really great. Um, yeah, thanks a lot for showing uh, this project to us. I think this is amazing. Do you have any advice for anyone listening to this? Um, I think kind of putting the project into something you can play around with early is um, definitely worth it, uh, worth the effort because it's quite fun. And even if your model isn't great, um, it's still nice to show something for it. And I think the other thing is um, try to be as structured in experiments as possible. Um, I'm not very good at that, um, but I know that definitely like everything would be a lot easier if I kind of keep track of my like experiments a bit better than overwriting what I was trying in the notebook over and over again. Um, yeah. Okay, thanks a lot for your time, for telling us uh, about your amazing project and uh, thanks everyone for listening. Thank you.